Within Studio One, we have several different ways that we can go about transposing our audio. So let's just jump right in and take a quick look at some of these methods. Now let's go ahead and play back these couple of tracks just to hear how things are without any changes to our audio. Okay, so now what if we wanted to transpose this guitar by a couple of semitones? We have a couple of different options. We can right click on it, and then we can see here we have transpose. Now this one's gonna be in semitones. We also have tune, which is gonna be in sense. So let's transpose by two semitones up. I'll double click on this and then just put in two, press enter, and then we'll give this a listen. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Let's right click again and we'll double click. Let's try to take this down to semitones. Minus two, press enter. Okay, so now when we make these changes within this menu, the settings here will work or they work in tandem with settings within our inspector. So let's come to the top left corner, click on the I, we open up our inspector. Now we've got this track selected and this event selected. If we had multiple events on this track, it's important that you select the one that you'd like to uh, transpose. So down near the bottom, let's hover and pull this panel up a bit. We can see that we have transpose and that's set to minus two because we just made that adjustment when we right clicked and entered that there. So again, we can make adjustments here and we'll put in minus four. Let's press enter and play this back. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. And as you can imagine, if I right click, this is gonna display four here as well. And again, our tuning is gonna be in sense. We have that same parameter that's available within the inspector for adjusting in sense here. Now let's go ahead and hold control and click on the transpose to take that back to the default of zero. Now a recent addition to Studio One is the global transpose here down at the bottom. So if we go ahead and click once, let's put in two and press enter and play this back. Okay, but there's no change here. So what's going on? Now, with this track selected, our inspector is open. Let's pull this down a bit. And then we can see here we have follow global transpose. And we can see that that plus two semitones is here, but this box is not checked, so it's not affecting this audio. So let's go ahead and check that box. If I select our drum track, then we can see, let's deselect that here. Uh, we can see that we have the global transpose here. This is also not checked. So let's go ahead and check that and then give this a listen. Okay, so we can hear our drums affected by this global transpose as well. So you want to be sure any tracks that you do want to be transposed, just check the box because maybe the drums, for instance, we don't want to have this transpose and then we can deselect. And that's going to play back at its original pitch. Okay, let's change our global transpose back to the default of zero. Now, another option that we have to transpose is by using time stretch. So if I come to our guitar part and then hover at its edge here, I'll press Alt. And if you notice that these double arrows down here are going to change and we have a little clock there. So while I'm holding Alt, I'll left click and hold. And let's just pull this in and we'll give this a listen. Okay, so, so far we're just playing this back more quickly. The pitch is still the same. So we're time stretching this audio, but keeping the same pitch with this setting here. And that is because for the time stretch mode that this track is in, it's set to sound. 
But if I were to change this to tape resampler, then this is going to function more like a traditional uh, sampler device. So now when I play this back, Okay, so I think you get the idea here. Now, if I were to, let's press W to zoom out a bit. Let's go ahead and hover at the edge again, and I'm gonna press Alt, press and hold, left click, hold, and drag this out. And let's just extend this out for two bars and give this a listen. Okay, so that doesn't quite work, at least not playing the whole way through, but I'm a bit curious to see if we were to do something like this. And let's press D as in dog to duplicate this out. Let's see if this would work. I'm just experimenting freestyle here. Okay, so let's, and let's try, this just kind of hit me. Let's try to trim this so that at the end we play a different part of this here. Let's pull this in and give this a shot. Not quite. Okay, so it kind of almost works, but I just kind of wanted to experiment with this as I was hearing it. I was hearing a little beat in my head. Um, so, but this is another way we can change our time stretch mode to tape. Now let's go ahead and undo all of those changes here. Now, another option that we have is if I were to select this and press control and M is in Mary, this is going to apply Melodyne to our guitar part. Now it didn't analyze it quite correctly. Let's go ahead and close off the inspector. So I'm gonna come up to the algorithm here and I'm gonna choose polyphonic sustain and let's give this a shot and redetect this. Okay, and because I'm using a more stripped down version, I don't actually have the ability to uh, transpose these individual notes. But if this were a basic melody playing one note at a time, then we could select the blobs and then adjust the pitch for those as well. So that would be yet another method. Let's control shift and M. Uh, actually, how do we remove the Melodyne? We would need to come here to audio and let's remove Melodyne. So control alt and M, we'll take that off of here. And for the final way, let's right click again. We can come down to audio. Over to the right, we have send to new sample one. So let's go ahead and make that action. We have a new track that's been created, and this audio loop is now loaded within our sample one. Let's solo this here, and I'm going to press caps lock to bring up our QWERTY keyboard, our virtual keyboard here. So now I can use my QWERTY keyboard to trigger the sample one, and by default our octave is on C3. So our initial or our original loop the root is set to C3, so if I go ahead and press Q, which should be C3, we hear that original pitch. But now, I'm going to use the left arrow to take our pitch down, change the octave that's being played back here. Now, if you notice that when I play higher within the keyboard, then the speed of this is going to be increased as we play lower, then uh, it's playing back slower. But we do have this follow song tempo that we can make use of. So if I go ahead and click once to activate that, I'll again 
play C2. And let's actually play our track back. Take this out of solo. Okay, I'm gonna arrow up to take this pitch up to C4. So now I'll press Q, that should be C4. Okay, so that doesn't sound that great. Once, the further we move away from the original sample and its pitch, the quality is going to kind of degrade a bit. But I think you can get the idea here that you can experiment with changing the pitch and using follow song tempo to keep the speed in line with your song tempo there within sample one. All right, so these are the various ways that we can go about transposing our audio within Studio One Seven. I hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.